In this video, we'll introduce you to the process of nuclear fission. In nuclear fission, a large or heavy nucleus breaks into smaller nuclei of intermediate size and gives off one or more neutrons. This process also releases a large amount of energy. The parent nucleus most commonly used for nuclear fission is uranium-235. The nuclear notation tells us it has 92 protons and 235 minus 92, which is 143 neutrons. In the fission of uranium-235, the uranium-235 nucleus is bombarded by relatively slow-moving neutrons. The nucleus will capture one of these neutrons, as shown here. The neutron moves toward the nucleus, where it is captured. And this forms an unstable nucleus of uranium-236, which becomes distorted in shape like this, a bit like a teardrop. And now this splits into two smaller fragments, releasing three neutrons. One of these intermediate-sized fission fragments is Krypton-92, with 36 protons and 56 neutrons. The other fragment is Barium-141, with 56 protons and 85 neutrons. And in the process, three more neutrons are released. And a large amount of energy is also released, mainly in the form of heat and gamma radiation. We'll write a nuclear equation for this process. We start with the uranium-235 nucleus, and we add a neutron to it. The uranium-235 nucleus captures this neutron and forms a nucleus of uranium-236, which is very unstable, and splits to form two smaller nuclei. One is barium-141, and the other is krypton-92. Three neutrons are also released as well as lots of energy, in the form of heat and gamma rays. If we do not show the intermediate nucleus, uranium-236, we can shorten this equation to this. The uranium-235 plus a neutron produces barium-141, krypton-92, three neutrons, and energy. Even though we have neutrons on both sides, we do not cancel any neutrons. The neutron on the left is a slow neutron, and it is needed for the uranium-235 nucleus to capture and become unstable. Therefore, we shouldn't cancel it from the equation. The neutrons produced by fission are initially highly energetic. We call them fast neutrons. This makes them different than the neutron on the left, which was slow. So we won't cancel any neutrons here. We'll check for conservation of charge. We see that the total charge on the left is 92 plus 0, which equals 92. And we can calculate the total charge on the right as 56 plus 36 plus 3 times 0, which adds up to 92, so charge is balanced. We can also check for conservation of mass. The total mass on the left is 235 plus 1, which equals 236. And the total mass on the right is 141 plus 92 plus 3 times 1, which is also equal to 236, so mass is conserved. This is only one of the reactions that take place when uranium-235 undergoes fission. Many other reactions are possible, all with different fission products. Many of these fission products are highly radioactive and undergo beta and gamma decay. Three particularly dangerous products are cesium-137, strontium-90, and iodine-131. Cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years, so it's radioactive for a long time. It's a group 1 element like potassium, so it enters the body like potassium. A radioactive element in the body can cause cell DNA damage or even cancer. Strontium-90 also has a half-life of about 30 years, so it's also radioactive for a long time. It's a group 2 element like calcium, so it enters the body like calcium and gets stored in the bones. It stays in the body much longer than cesium-137. 
Iodine-131 has a half-life of only 8 days, but it's a strong beta emitter. Its radiation can cause mutations in cells. Iodine is needed by the thyroid gland and is stored there. If a person is exposed to radioactive iodine-131, it gets absorbed by the thyroid gland, where it can eventually cause thyroid cancer. Sometimes we are given an equation for a fission reaction with one of the products missing. We can easily determine this product using the conservation of charge and mass. Let's do an example. Here we're given a fission reaction for uranium-235. Xenon-143 is one product and we're asked to find the other one. We'll start by using conservation of charge. The total charge on the left side is 92 plus 0, which equals 92. So the total charge on the right side must also be equal to 92. The charge on the xenon is 54, and the charge on three neutrons is 3 times 0, which is 0. So the charge on the missing particle must be 92 minus 54, which is equal to 38. So we write 38 here on the bottom left of the symbol for the other element. Looking on the periodic table, we see that element number 38 is strontium, so we write its symbol SR here. In order to find the mass number of this isotope, we use conservation of mass. The total mass on the left is 235 plus 1, which is 236. So the total mass on the right side must also be equal to 236. The mass of the xenon is 143, and the total mass of three neutrons is 3 times 1, which equals 3. So, so far the mass on the left side of this expression is 143 plus 3, which equals 146. So this means the mass of the strontium must be 236 minus 146, which is equal to 90. We can double check here, 143 plus 90 plus 3 does equal 236. So since the mass of strontium is 90, we can write 90 here on the top left of the symbol SR. So we can state that the missing particle is strontium 90, or SR with a 90 on the top left and a 38 on the bottom left. Sometimes we are given an equation for a fission reaction with both of the fission products, but not the number of neutrons released. Because neutrons have a zero charge, we can use conservation of mass to help us find this. Let's do an example. Uranium-235 captures a neutron and undergoes a fission reaction. To produce the fission products tellurium-137 and zinc-97, and we're asked to determine the number of neutrons in this reaction. The total mass on the left side of this equation is 235 plus 1, which equals 236. So the total mass on the right must also be equal to 236. The mass of the tellurium is 137, and the mass of zinc is 97. 137 plus 97 is equal to 234, so the total mass of the neutrons must be 236 minus 234, which is equal to 2. So since each neutron has a mass of 1, in order to get a mass of 2, we need to have 2 neutrons. So the missing number of neutrons we now know is 2. If we double check, we can see that 137 plus 97 plus 2 times 1 does equal 236, so we have conservation of mass. And this is our finished nuclear fission reaction, giving these products. Now we'll show you how fission can proceed by a chain reaction, if there are enough uranium-235 atoms in the sample. We'll start with a sample that has a fairly high concentration of uranium-235 nuclei. We'll just show a few of the nuclei here. To one of those nuclei, we send a neutron that is slow enough to be captured. The neutron is absorbed by the uranium-235 nucleus. This nucleus will now undergo fission and release three more neutrons like this. These nuclei will now split, releasing three neutrons each. 
Now we have nine neutrons that could collide with nine more uranium-235 nuclei, which causes these nuclei to split, releasing three neutrons each. Now there are 27 neutrons released, and they can split 27 more nuclei. This whole process takes place in a fraction of a second, and keeps on going, splitting more and more nuclei, releasing huge amounts of energy. This process is called a chain reaction. An uncontrolled chain reaction is what was used in atomic bombs. A nuclear reactor in a nuclear power plant uses a chain reaction like this, but the reaction is controlled so that energy is released at a desired rate.